afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. What's up, everybody? Got my matcha. Have you had breakfast yet? Or dinner or <laughs> lunch? I have to remember that people are watching from different parts of the world, which is really cool. I had somebody comment uh, the other day from Australia. Wow, that may be the furthest distance that somebody has uh, viewed from. Let me bring my comments up. We'll get started in just a few minutes. I want to give you a thought for today. Let me know if these, I wanted to say short messages will help you. But um, it's a joy to come on and it's really exciting to have you join me. So I'm going to send a notification out to somebody who says they're not getting the no notices that I'm on, so I'm going to share it with him, see if he gets it. Excuse me. Alright. Happy Friday, everybody. If you're on, let me know if you don't mind. I always like to see who's on. Today I'm going to talk about the goodness of God and Repentance, what that means. It's not what a lot of people think it means. So we'll get started in just a few. I came on a few minutes earlier than what I did yesterday. and the day before. Woke up super early this morning, around five. That's early for me. So, 
as I said, we have people that watch this from all over. Even if they don't watch live, some watch later. Let me go to my page and see where the people are viewing from. As I mentioned, somebody viewed from Australia and where else? Yeah, they did. I'm live. Hi. I'm on. I'm live. Hi. Ain't that school? That's, <laughs> Sorry. Carla's excited because <clears throat> the uh, National Serval garbage pickup. They picked up the uh, the big table that was taking up space in our garage. So I know you're happy to know about that. So, okay, so we had we have viewers this week from Australia and and Iceland. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so, yeah. So welcome. Let me give them a shout out. That's Paula from Iceland, who viewed at some point yesterday. And And Annie from Australia, she at some point viewed Wednesday's message. So that encourages me to have people. It's amazing how people can find these uh, these broadcasts. And excuse me for these long introductions and greetings. I just like to. I don't like to jump right in. I like to give time for people to jump on. And um, if you're watching a preview, or preview, if you're watching the replay, you can fast forward a little bit until um, you see the scripture pop up or I begin to teach, okay? So I'm excited, man. I'm excited to share with you today about, uh, I love the word. And I believe you love the word. I believe you love Jesus. That's why you. That's why you're here. And um, because we're we're here to make Jesus known and get that word out. And today I want to talk about sharing, sharing the goodness of God. Sharing the goodness of God. Um, I'm going to clean my screen up here. Give me a second. With all these notifications popping up like a jack-in-the-box all over my screen. Some time I'm going to need to clean this up because this stuff makes a mess of my screen. It's getting away of my, in the way of my scriptures. Hey, uh, don't have any comments right now. So, um, who's out there? Anybody? Anybody home? <laughs> Praise God. I'm excited.
getting up at five o'clock helps me to get a lot of stuff done before distractions start getting in front of me. Okay. Y'all quiet today? That's all right. You got your coffee, your tea. I got my matcha here. You see my matcha? I don't want to spill it, but, uh, yeah. Matcha. This is what I do first thing in the morning, get matcha. Not really first thing today, but didn't get around to it for a couple hours, but. Ah, matcha. All right. Like in um, Karate Kid 1, Mr. What's his name? Miyagi. Whatever his name is. They made uh, Japanese matcha. All right, let's dive in. Let's dive right in. Do you despise the riches of his goodness? Some translations translate this kindness. All right. God is a kind, a good God. We serve a good, good father. Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering? God is patient with us. <laughs> Not knowing that the goodness of God, this is what I want to underscore right here, the goodness of God. The word goodness is there twice, isn't it? People, there are people out there who despise his his goodness. They don't, they don't um, look at they don't they don't look at his goodness and you know, they kind of or, or take the goodness of God lightly. Do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to the to repentance? The goodness of God. There are people, religious people, who are screaming at people. They'll stand on the corner, scream at people, repent. And they look mean and they shake the Bible at people. And you need to repent. Don't you know that the judgment is coming? Well, the judgment came. When Jesus went to the cross 2,000 years ago, he bore the punishment for all of our sins, past, present, and future. He bore the judgment on himself. He was punished for us. He who knew no sin, Jesus knew no sin, never committed any acts of sin, but he became sin and we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. He, he took everything that we deserved and we receive the righteousness of God what we didn't deserve Jesus didn't deserve punishment did he like how, how can I how can I be righteous apart from my doing achieving or or, or or, or my efforts, don't I have to do something to be favorable in God's eyes? No, Jesus did it all. Well, how can that be? I don't I didn't do anything to deserve righteousness, so how can I be righteous? Well, did Jesus do anything to deserve sin? Or to excuse me, to, to deserve to be punished. Um, he didn't. He took on our sin. He didn't deserve that. He became sin for us. He took what what we deserve. He didn't deserve it. He never. He knew no sin. Did no sin. Committed no acts of sin. And he got what he didn't deserve. 
Okay. So when you see that, you can see why on the other end, <laughs> who did he do it for? None of, none of what Jesus did on the cross, he did for himself. All of it was for us. So now um, we get, he didn't deserve sin, but he got sin taking our place so that we, because of what he did, we get righteous righteousness that we don't deserve. Because he took the sin he didn't deserve. Does that make sense? Okay. So, man, and, and this is the kind of thing that we need to be preaching instead of shaking our Bibles at people, screaming at people to repent. And, but what does repent mean? A lot of people don't understand what that means. I remember one time I was walking down the street in Indianapolis, Indiana, years ago. And there was a guy just messing with people. And I know, I, I, I believe that this guy, I don't even remember his face or whatever. And he probably, hey, Steph, this guy was probably sincere. I believe that he thought that he was doing God's service. But he started yelling and, well, he wasn't really yelling. He was making a comment to me as I was walking down the street. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. He said, look at you. Just walking leisurely down the street. Don't you know that there's a judgment coming? You need to repent. I mean, man, you don't know me. <laughs> you know? As I said, the judgment came. Jesus took our sins on the cross. He was judged for us, all right? So what? what's the message that we need to be preaching? That, that he's a good God, and that will lead people to repent. Repentance means to change your mind. It doesn't mean to turn from your sin. That will be a... A, a consequence, a result of repentance, but repentance doesn't mean that. It means it's metanoia in the Greek. It means to change your mind. This is the good news that we should be sharing. Okay, let's keep this short for once today. Okay, and that's really I, I want to leave you with with a thought. I get into this word, I get so excited. I mean, I just want to. You know, just share more and more and more because it's so good. Some people think, uh, I, I've said this earlier this week, that this gospel of grace is too good to be true. I mean, it's it, it seems too good to be true, I admit. But it's so good because it is true. Oh, man. It's so good. Jesus is really that good. And see, it's, 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 not, it's not hard to, uh, I mean, it's not hard to share the gospel. It's easy because you get so full. I mean, I'm, I'm just so full, just taking in his goodness every single day and looking at Jesus as we behold him We've changed, and we want to tell people, well, you need to go out and, and tell people about Jesus. All he's done for you, you need to go and tell it. I don't need to be threatened. And <laughs> I don't need somebody to threaten me or, or guilt trip me into sharing the gospel. Once you understand, like Jesus uh, told those people, he that um, for is forgiven much loves much. When you understand how much you've been forgiven, you're going to love just as a as a reaction to what Jesus has done for you. You're going to stay out of sin because you've changed your mind and you've received the grace of God. 
And sin will not have dominion over you anymore because you're under grace. When you're under grace, you'll sin less by accident and stay out of sin more by accident than you ever could on purpose. I don't want to sin. I don't even think about sin. Sin shouldn't even be on our radar. It shouldn't even be, be on our mind. What about sin? Well, it's canceled. <laughs> huh? He became sin that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay, so it's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. It, it, when God shows you how good, good he is, that leads people to change their mind. When you when we share with people how good God is, it will cause people to change their mind. Okay? And uh, let me give you a couple of examples and then I'll, I'll let you go. But just think about this woman. I was uh, listening to Connie Witter teach this morning about the um, woman caught in adultery. What did God do? I'm not going to go over that. I mean, I could spend a whole lot of time there. Two uh, stories I want to tell you from the gospel, share with you. This woman caught in adultery in the very act. Okay, she was caught. She was guilty. All right. But what did Jesus do? He said, he that is without sin, cast the first stone. They all start walking out from the oldest to the youngest. Um, and Jesus said, I mean, only Jesus and the woman are standing there. Those that, and, and Jesus said, he that is without sense cast the first stone. Okay. And they all start walking out till, until Jesus and the woman were the only ones left. And so those who, who would have condemned her could not because they were not, they were, were not without sin. And the one who could have condemned her. The only one there without sin was Jesus. He that is without sin cast the first stone. Only one person there. Only one person in the audience without sin. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't a woman. It wasn't those people. They had to start walking off. The only one without sin was Jesus. Remember? He who became sin for us he knew no sin. So he could he's the only one that could have condemned condemned her. That shows you the heart of the heart of the Father because Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. He was the will of God in action. Jesus said, He who has seen me has seen the Father. So if you want to know what the Father is like, just look at Jesus. I mean, if you doubt the grace of God and, and what we should be preaching. Just look at Jesus. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You ever read it? <laughs> you you who, who are preachers of the law, have been any law preachers listening to this? Hey, just, you don't, you don't have to listen to me. Listen to Jesus. How did he deal with people who were in sin? You made this stop that sin. Did Jesus do that? Then the Father's not doing that. And we shouldn't be doing that. Come on. It's, it's so simple. But religion has made it complicated. Goodness. That's what we're talking about. Goodness. Goodness. <laughs> it's the goodness of God. Jesus showed this woman goodness. The, the ones that could have, that, 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 that wanted to, that would have condemned her, could not. The one that could have condemned her would not. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Only woman, only Jesus and this woman is standing alone. And Jesus said, neither. She says, he said, has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. Neither do I. Neither do I what? Condemn you. I used to preach this all the time. Talk about it. Jesus said, Go and sin no more. I focus on not sinning, but actually it was the, the focus is not first on the sin. 
And see, religion gets it backwards. You stop the sinning, and then we won't condemn you. <laughs> see, there is no condemnation in Christ. So Jesus gave her first this freedom, this liberty. Isn't that amazing? The gospel brings liberty. He gave her the gift of no condemnation. And then he said, sin no more, because now she's not condemned anymore. Now she has the power to live holy. Okay? Story number two. Luke chapter 19, when Jesus dealt with this, uh, with Zacchaeus, all right? The notorious sinner, obviously, stealing from people, cheating people out of their taxes. He worked for the IRS. <laughs> he went ahead of the crowd because he was a short fellow. And uh, he went up in the, in the tree and got a spot ahead of, ahead of everybody. So when Jesus got to town, he could see him. And so Jesus said, hey, Zacchaeus, come on down. And uh, I'm, I'm coming to your crib. Man, he's excited. Can you imagine? And uh, man, Jesus is coming to your house, man. He coming to visit. All right. And so. This guy was obviously a sinner, and and uh, and so this guy saw how good that Jesus Jesus showed um, kindness to this man. All right, and what what happened when Jesus showed kindness to him? Jesus didn't tell him, "Now you need to stop your sinning." What happened? He said. Hey, look, Jesus, half my goods I'm going to give to the poor. If I've stolen anything from anybody, I'm, I'm going to give it back four times, fourfold. So what made him change his mind? What made him repent? It's the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. All right, y'all. I am done. I got fed myself. I got I got real happy about this message today. Praise God. Isn't God so, 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 so good? All right. So if you like this today, please share with your friends because you know people and you have influence on people that I don't have. You can reach people that I can't reach. And together we can um, spread this word. Help me uh, spread the word about these morning devotionals. There's a way that you can go on Facebook and be notified. Um, and uh, I can't show you the exact steps now because I'd have to get my mind around how to do that. But you can get notifications when I'm on. And I've been on somebody's live and it said in a comment section, it'll give you an option if you want to turn turn on a feature that like um, to be notified when the person comes on. So if you see that, click it. All right. You may have already done that, but um, just um, let me know if you got anything out of this, what you got out of it. If you don't mind, just share something. And uh, if you know somebody, again, if you know somebody that this will help, uh, share it, please. Share it with your friends. So. Okay, y'all have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and we will catch you later.